Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we'll create a line chart in Excel. Then we'll import that line chart into PowerPoint and bring it to life with PowerPoint's animation. This video was made using Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint 2019. The first thing you want to do is build your chart completely within Excel and get it formatted in exactly the way you want it to look. So to build a chart you need some data. What I'm going to chart in this exercise is four different investment options. All of these four investment options have been available since January 1st, 2005, so the last 15 years. And I've chosen the S&P 500 exchange traded fund, symbol SPY. On this one, I've chosen a Morgan Stanley Capital International Europe, Far East, and Asia exchange traded fund. Here's an emerging market fund, and here's a gold fund. These first seven columns were downloaded straight out of Yahoo Finance. I added this column. This is the percentage change, and this is a cumulative percentage change. So if you go to formulas, you'll see that no matter how far down I go, I'm always drawing back to that initial price. So that would be like my entry price. And as the price of this exchange traded fund goes up or down, I will get my total return here. And this is total return because I'm using the adjusted close column. This reflects the reinvestment of any dividends paid by any of these exchange traded funds. What I've done on this worksheet is assemble just those four blue columns that I created on the other individual worksheets and I've got a date column. This is the actual data that I will chart. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight my four series and insert a line chart. And I'm going to make this as big as I can and make a few changes to it. Let's do a couple things to format this. I'm going to give this chart a nice title that's appropriate. And I don't really like this gray series here. I'm going to change that to a different color fill that shows up a little better, like green. So we've got our U.S. stocks in blue, international stocks in orange, emerging markets in green, and gold in uh, kind of a gold color. The next thing I'd like to do is move this legend. I kind of prefer to have the legend up here at the top of this rather than the bottom. So let's go with that. Another problem is that my horizontal axis has numbers on it and I want to have dates. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my horizontal axis labels. And those will be over here. We'll say OK. And now we've got dates. Uh, I kind of prefer to format those dates a little bit. And the way I want to do that is with a custom angle. So let's put those at a 45 degree angle, roughly. I just think it makes them a little easier to read. Let's go with 50 degrees. I'd also like to put a border around my chart. So let's format the chart area. We'll go with a border of dark black. And I kind of think it looks nice if you go with this rounded corners option. So the, uh, the corners are rounded there. Now there's just one other change I'd like to make to this chart. We've got some scaling issues here. I want to move this date axis down to the bottom into the negative territory because it's we go below zero here at one point on the percentage. 
And I'd also like to change this scale up here because this 350 to 400 percent here is is blank and so that's kind of a waste of space and I don't really need to go out to uh, one decimal place on that percentage so let's make those changes to move those dates down on the horizontal axis I'm gonna right click on that and say format axis I know that's a little bit off the screen but you pull up that menu and there's a couple of options here we want the label position not next to the axis but down low so that'll get those dates down at the extreme bottom and I wanted to change these values here these numbers to zero decimal places so we'll make that change as well and we still want to get rid of this blank space here between negative 50 and negative 100 percent and this blank space up here at 350 to 400 that's kind of wasted area so let's fix that that's also going to be on the format axis menu so we have our bounds here our minimum is negative 1.0 which is negative 100 percent I want that to be negative 0.5 and our maximum is 400% or 4.0 let's change that to 3.5 so my chart now looks pretty much the way I want it to look in my presentation now what I want to do with this animation is I don't want to blast this entire story at my audience. I want to build this slowly, kind of like a horse race unfolding. And I want these four series of data to unfold slowly and work their way across the screen so that my viewers can see times when gold looked like a great investment and U.S. stocks didn't look like a very good investment at all and then see the story unfold over time. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just copy my chart, jump over to PowerPoint where I've got a blank slide opened up and I'm going to paste in my chart. And let's resize that a little bit so it fills up the entire viewing area of the slide. Now to animate this chart there's an animations menu right here. The first thing you need to do is choose your type of animation. There's a lot of effects here to have this unfold. The least fancy one and probably in this case the most professional to me is the one here up here. So my data, my lines, my entire chart will simply appear. Now you have some options over here. These effect options are very important. Do you want your animation to occur as one object the way it is now or by series or by category? If I check by series that's gonna be one series painting all the way across followed by another series followed by another. I don't want that. In our case we want it, this to unfold by date and that is actually going to be the category. So we want these to unfold by category and the time increments you can leave on auto. I'm not sure exactly what you'll get but we want to put that on about a quarter of a second. There's actually one other thing we need to do before we do this. Open up the animation pane and you can see all of your different data points. There's as many lines here as there were on your spreadsheet data going all the way down. This is monthly data, so it's 192 lines long. So I've got 192 movements potentially in my animation as these build across the screen. So we don't want any but the first one to be initiated with a mouse click. We want the all the remaining ones from here all the way down. I'm hitting shift and down arrow to go all the way down. I want those to occur after previous. 
So those will occur on timing. And you notice a little timing symbol occurred here. Now there is one option with this first movement under timing chart animation start animation by drawing the chart background I actually don't want that I'm gonna uncheck that and you'll see what that means in a second when we run the animation so let's preview our animation and you can see that's the way it's gonna work with a quarter of a second for each individual line on our spreadsheet data and this makes for a little more interesting presentation than just showing it all at once now one thing you may want to do is to pause this presentation at some point there's two ways to go about doing that you can either program in a pause of a certain number of seconds at a certain point in time or you can pause manually if I was presenting this to a crowd, I would probably want to do the manual way, but I'll show you the automatic programmed way first. Let's say I wanted to pause my presentation when the lines built over to this area here during Obama's Great Recession, and I wanted to pause for a few seconds to discuss that. What you have to do is figure out roughly which movement we're talking about so I'm going to go down about 50 rows and choose this one. Just select where you think it is and let's bump that up to a five second delay. Each animation movement takes a quarter second up until this one and this one will take five seconds. So let's see if we got it right. We'll run our animation and we should see a pause of five seconds at some point here. There's our animation pausing and then it resumes after five seconds. So that's one way to pause. I'm gonna dial that back down to a quarter of a second so it's back the way it was. I'm gonna go into full screen mode for these other demonstrations. So if we go into presentation mode, and by the way, by unchecking that box, this is why my presentation starts with a blank chart. If I had checked that box, these grid lines of my chart and these percentages on the axes, they would show up simultaneously with the start of my data. But the way I've done it now, by unchecking that box, I can left mouse click and my presentation starts. So one way to pause the presentation is to hit the W key. I don't like this. It turns the entire screen to white, but hitting the W key again resumes the presentation. Another way to do it is to hit the B key for black and it will all go to black. I don't like that one either. Uh, I find it kind of annoying, but if you hit the B key again, your presentation resumes. I think a better way to do this is to take your mouse, put it up in an area where there isn't anything going on, and just simply right mouse click. That will pause your presentation, but leave what's been created so far in the animation on the screen. And to resume the presentation, you simply left mouse click and you continue on. So right mouse click to stop, left mouse click to resume. I think that's a much simpler and easier way to do it. The only downside is that this little menu box appears, but you can usually control that and put it off to the side somewhere. I hope you found this demonstration of converting an Excel chart into a animated PowerPoint slide useful and informative. And I hope you consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. If not, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or a comment if you have a better way of doing these things. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.